All right, we'll stay in the NFL, and it's that time of year for the franchise tags. We got nine players uh, with the tag this offseason, including three that got the tag for the second consecutive year. That's more than a quarter of the NFL teams, but it does fall well short of the record 14 franchise tags that were dished out last offseason. The positions vary somewhat. We got two wide receivers, three offensive linemen, one defensive lineman, and three safeties. All right, over to you, Drink. What stands out to you on this franchise tag list? Um, well, <clears throat> I think first and foremost, what, what I did notice about this whole uh, franchise tag situation in this offseason that I like was what the Bucks did in general, not just Chris Godwin, but um, how – you know what? Let me backtrack. Let me talk about something else um, before I get in that. The in the NFL, right? They find these teams always find a loophole. No matter how clad iron these these regulations are in the NFL, they find a way. What I find very interesting is this season they found they got a new term which is called a voidable year inside of contract. So basically, a lot of these guys, let's say, um. Uh, the guy we were talking about earlier, Levante David, for for example. Levante David, on on the surface, it looks as if he signed a two-year deal worth how many of a million. Technically, though, if you actually look in the fine print, he actually signed a four-year deal. However, they have this new term called voidable contracts or voidable years. So what they did is they made the last two years voidable until he gets to the second year and then they can activate the third year and then activate the fourth year and so on and so forth. But since they're voided, you can't hit them as far as the cap go because those years on paper doesn't exist. Even though between the player and the organization, they do exist. It's one of these fine things. That I find it fascinating how these teams are figuring out how to keep their, their players and stay under the cap at the same time. So I want to throw that out because I thought that was very fascinating. Um, but on to the question, like I was saying about the Bucks, well, we know what the Bucks situation was. You know, they had to work, they had to figure out how do we play, how do we pay Chris Godwin, Shaq Barrett, Levante Davis, and keep Tom Brady happy. Um, and you know, that's not mess up with the dynamics of the team too much. So we got to figure out if we can move this piece for that piece, you know, so on and so forth. It seems to me the Bucks have figured it out because I think Shaq Barrett is going to get paid. I think he's going to get paid. You just did the two-year deal with uh, Levante Davis. So both of those guys, you got them covered. So you're like, all right, cool. Chris Godwin then's become your biggest problem. Oh, we'll franchise tag him. How you feel about being franchise tag, Chris? Oh, I ain't really tripping. We make it to the Super Bowl again. That's all good. And then next year you can pay me. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, cool. Now we happy with that. Hey, Antonio Brown, we're probably going to bring you and Grunt back on the minimums. You know, no big deal. How y'all feel about that? Hey, bring it along. We with it. Tom, we're going to re we gonna reconstruct your contract so we can get a little more out of your contract. How you feel about that? Man, you know, I don't care. I'm going to play until I'm 50. It don't matter to me. All right, cool. Um, And... The reason I'm fascinated with this is because this is what the Chiefs did. And we just seen what the Chiefs did. They made it right back to the Super Bowl again. They only lost two games on the season. It wasn't the best showing in the Super Bowl, but they were still there nonetheless. And why? Because they did, they pretty much copy and paste. They paid the guys that they had to pay. And this is without the voidable contract thing, I might add. But they paid the guys they had to pay, and they made it happen. Patrick Mahomes, by the way, has done the same thing Tom Brady was doing mm -hmm. in New England. Re he keep reconstructing his contract because he's smart enough to know it ain't not about the Benjamins. It's about these rings and the Benjamins. So he getting them both. Um, so I, I was I liked it that. Now, if I had to go with, let's say, a surprise, right? Let's say a, a guy I seen and I was like, wait, they franchise tagged him again? I thought Allen Robinson was gone because – He's been talking about a contract all year. They kind of been like, ah, uh, yeah, man, we hear you. We know you better than any quarterback that's throwing the ball to you. But, you know, we, we, we'll get to it later. You franchise tag Robinson. You best to be coming with a quarterback to throw him the ball. This is ridiculous. Like, if I'm Robinson, I'm like, well, I might have to take this team to court. Like, I don't. 
you gonna franchise tag me, and then you're not gonna give me a quarterback to throw me the ball? Like I, I don't know, but if I'm Allen Robinson, I might be raising hell this year. Like I'm, I refuse to just be out here, like with elite talent, ready for somebody to throw me the ball, and you keep every guy you can get off the thrift store, you keep signing him to throw me the ball. Listen, this I'm not a charity case. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not out here raising money for the, the, the sick or the, the hungry. I'm out here trying to get paid. I need somebody to throw me the ball. I'm sick of this charity case crap. Um, so I was a little surprised with that. Um, Cam Robinson, I, you know, I looked at that. I, I thought the Jags would move. I mean, like Cam Robinson hasn't been terrible. About By no means that I'm saying he was a terrible little tackle. Matter of fact, from everything – that I understand about Cam Robinson, he's been one of the better left tackles in the league. However, some told me that Jag was going to move on. I just thought they was going to move on, you know, get some fresh legs in there, you know, because like Jags, with Urban Meyer taking over the Jags, I just feel like a lot of stuff was going to get changed around because Urban Meyer wants the team a certain look um, compared to what Doug Marone had and, you know, so on and so forth. So I was, I was surprised to see that re-sign. Um, Little Williams. I don't know if this guy is, is he good? I don't. And the reason I ask is he got drafted really high by the Jets. Then they released him or traded him or whatnot. He got with the Giants. I don't hear his name a lot as far as a game changer, but it always around this time of year when it comes to franchise tags or, you know, contract extension, something like that. That's when I hear his name every year. I don't really, it don't stick out to me as far as what he does on the field. You might pay him a little more attention than I have. That's why I ask, like, is he good? I don't know, but, I, 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 you know, I'm a little baffled with that, I guess to say. And then um, the last one was the Saints. I see, so they franchise tag Marcus Williams, but they they sent uh, Janoris Jenkins packing. And I understand, if I'm, I remember this correctly, I guess they still in some type of uh, contract negotiation with Marshawn Lattimore. Um so, I'm what about that secondary? I'm glad they brought back Marcus Williams at least, but that secondary look like it might take some hits this season. Um, it don't look like they'll be as tight. And that, granted, I'm not saying the same secondary was world beaters from the start, but you know it was good enough to get the job done. You know what I mean with Lattimore, uh, Jenkins, and et cetera, et cetera. It was good enough to get the job done. Now you're losing a couple of those pieces. So and you still got a quarterback situation to figure out. So let let's see how that goes. Um, but you know, as far as like sticking out to me, I, I just really like what the Bucks did. I, I think a lot of teams should take the approach that if you can, what the Chiefs did last year, what the Bucks did this year, try to bring those pieces back. Let's run it back. Let's, let's try to make something happen and let's see where it goes. So I'm going to, I'm going to say the Bucks and not just Chris Godwin though, just the whole mix of everything, how they, how they got everybody under the salary this year. Yeah, pretty active, um, pretty active time in the franchise tag. It seemed like um, you know I had to roll back to last year. It was like, oh wow, fourteen. Oh, we must have been must have been busy that day when we talked about it. Um, the I, I do I do agree about the Bucks. I thought uh, keeping Chris Gowan is a v- very smart move, even if you can't maybe pay him this year or right now. I, I think he's a real real critical piece, and I think um, you know it, it was come playoff time that. You know, I thought Chris Godwin was a real a real key to that offense. Um, so good for good for the Bucks, and of course, you know when you're, you know, I, we assume that at some point Tom Brady will stop playing football, but until until that time, load up, load up as much as you can, keep the weaponry, keep the armory locked and loaded, so we can go to work on Sundays, and that's what the Bucks are doing, and I completely agree with it. Much as you know, last year what they did with. Uh, Leonard Fournette, bringing him in, uh, the drafting of Tristan Wirfs, all these things to help Tom Brady at his advanced age. Um, absolutely right. And, you know, defensively, it, as it turns out, they're in a n- real nice position over there with that a fearsome front seven and a secondary with Antoine Winfield that punches above his weight class. At the Tampa Bay's, Tampa Bay's in, in fantastic position. Uh, there were some, you know, I, I thought that I agree. I do agree also with Cam Robinson. I thought it was a little bit curious. Um, I think, 
you know, since his rookie season, he's kind of been a little up and down, maybe a little inconsistent. Uh, we do have a source down there in Jacksonville who, and I just get, I did, I got the sense from him, you know, last couple of years that, uh, you know, he just wasn't in error with Cam Robinson. You know, I think it also, he lost the season to injury. Uh, but with him being franchise tag, uh, I, I have to assume that that's, Urban Meyer has some input and say, you know, I like Cam Robinson. I want him to stick around. And because of that, you know, we'll just have to see how that goes. But, you know, in, in totality, I think Cam Robinson is a good player. It just seems a little, it seems a little odd to me. And, you know, Allen Robinson, you, you, you talk about, you know, the quarterback situation in Chicago. You know what? Uh, to me, Allen Robinson has a little DeAndre Hopkins in him. You remember the, the, the first several years of DeAndre Hopkins career, you had uh, you had Tom Savage and Case Keenum and TJ Brock Yates Osweiler. and Brock Osweiler. Thank you for filling in that blank because I knew I was going to forget somebody that <laughs> Bill O'Brien had, you know, flopped in there before Deshaun Watson and before he started, you know, tearing down teams. Um, but Allen Robinson, you, th- um, you know, his the, mo- the two most notable quarterbacks he's had or Mr. Trubisky and Blake Bortles. So you know Allen Robinson. When Allen Robinson comes out and puts up 200 catches over the past two years, you know he's the real he's deal. He's one of the most underrated – he might be the most underrated receiver in football. And because of that, I think the, I think the tag's disrespectful. I, I get, it's got a little uh, different reasons, but this is about how I felt with A.J. Green in Cincinnati. Um I, I would either pay the man or I'd let him walk. And I, I don't, I don't like there, There's some instances where I understand the franchise tag and I like it for certain teams. I think, I don't think this was done in good faith. I think, and we do see oftentimes the franchise tag is simply an extension to allow teams to continue to negotiate a long-term contract. I really hope that's what this is. This is a guy who deserves to get his money. So I hope that Chicago's continuing to work on this and take and take some contract negotiations seriously because Allen Robinson should be he should get paid. Um, the the Leonard Williams thing, um, no, no, I haven't paid all that much attention because he plays in New York and New York has two pretty bad football teams right now. <laughs> uh, so no, but I you know I, I'm gonna say I think the Giants defense last year really kind of improved. I think Leonard Williams did have a lot to do with it and. The one, the, I think the big knock on Leonard Williams, you know, kind of early in his career was, I think everybody, everybody likes Leonard Williams. And they think he's a really good football player. You just didn't quite have the metrics that could back it up. 11 and a half sacks is 11 and a half sacks. So with that, you kind of, you're getting, you know, along with the talent, you're getting some quantifiable um, uh, result to where you can say, yeah, 11 and a half sacks. Are we using that in negotiating table? Pay me. And I'm also going to say, couple other th- points off of Leonard Williams. I don't, I think the NFL, this whole thing where you can franchise guys in back-to-back years, I don't like that. I think you should, I think the NFL should have a rule to where you, if you franchise a guy, you know, one year, the next season, he should be ineligible. You should either give him a, give him an actual contract or you should let him walk. You shouldn't be like Justin Simmons, Brandon Scherf, Leonard Williams. They, they shouldn't be, even Kirk Cousins. You remember Kirk Cousins would get, I he got franchised two or three straight years, you know, and, and, and I think we, I think we, I, I felt like they were never serious about paying him. No, and no. I don't think team, I don't think, you know, one year and you want to do it to try to help teams, you know, keep their, keep their really, their star player or whatever, because they don't feel like they can pay him a max amount of dollars for his position. I think one year is fine, but the back to back thing, it, it bothers me. And I don't think you should be allowed to, but these guys come out there on these one year deals. And we just saw it with Dak Prescott, he gets hurt. And not everybody gets that fortunate. You know, there's a, a whole plethora of situations where, you know, if Leonard Williams gets hurt, he's not getting the big bag. He's not going to get it. You know, I think, you know, you could like Brandon Scherf, even Justin Simmons, like they're not getting it. So, and the other thing about it is, when I think Leonard Williams, it makes me think of the Jets who are now out here franchising Marcus May. The, the Jets are, the Jets are just awful. Have you, I can't, I can't even fathom, like, how do you let these guys that you draft super high and they just gone? And now other teams are dealing with them, you know, Jamal Adams, Leonard Williams, 
and in the moves you do make, you you pay Le'Veon Bell this amount of money. You don't even you don't even know how to use him properly, or maybe he just can't play no more. That the the Jets just bother me. Um, and I, you know, a guy like Marcus May, a nice player, but you he's a safety. You just had an all pro safety, and you you were such an inept organization that you could not keep him happy, and you couldn't pay him. It, it, it's just it. It's a separate thing, but it's just another example of the Jets just being awful. And I don't, and just for the Saints, as I do think, I do want to get to something you said about the Saints secondary. I think that the Janoris Jenkins thing, I don't think it's that big a deal. I think guys this time of year, and we've seen it, got, uh, teams are just trying to shed salary. And some of these veteran guys, you know, it's, it beca- I think it becomes an age game. If, if you happen to be on the wrong side of 30 or you're whatever age and like, all right, we got to shed this just to, just to, if nothing else, to get a little younger. But I still think there's a lot of good things in that secondary. You got Lattimore. You're going to keep Marcus Williams with this, Malcolm Jenkins. And don't forget about guys like uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who's a very versatile player, can play nickel. Don't forget about P.J. Williams. I still think there's a lot in that secondary that they could be okay. The bigger issue for them will be will be quarterback, of course. Yeah, I, I, I guess my comment comes off if – Negotiation with Lattimore goes left. I, I just think they secondary gonna take a big hit. No, that yeah yeah that, if they can yeah um, if they can't if they can't lock up Lattimore then that'll be a huge deal. But I if I had to say I gotta believe they'll get that done. And Lattimore is an elite corner in this league. He's he I think he's top five. I gotta believe since they're doing this with Marcus Williams, they feel very confident that they can handle the Marshawn Lattimore negotiations. 